Hey, what's going on guys? Alex Muzikin here from Mr. Build It, and in today's video, I showed you how we're gonna make this herringbone dining room table using plywood. And in an add bonus feature, I'm gonna show you exactly how to start welding so you can make these beautiful legs yourself. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Let's go. To accomplish building the tabletop, you will need one 4x8 sheet of MDF, that'll be the base of the tabletop, and one sheet of the 3 quarter inch maple ply for the actual finishing top. Now for the MDF, once I laid it down in my garage, I like to lay it down on top of some foam insulation, usually they use it for garage doors, this makes it perfect for making cuts on the ground. I laid all my cuts out where it'll be 37 and a quarter by 77 and a half, that's just for the base itself. I used my track saw, or if you don't have a track saw, you can just use a circular saw with some straight edges, and I made my cuts. With the cutoff pieces, I didn't want to scrap them and throw them away. Instead, I came up with a way to reinforce the base with the MDF. So I threw a blade onto my table saw, 80 tooth blade. I usually use this for plywood to prevent any kind of tear outs. Once I got it installed, I then took all the scrap pieces that I cut off and I ripped them all into one inch thickness. This is gonna be the reinforcing parts underneath of the MDF. Once all the pieces were cut, I then brought them over back to the original cut, the 37 and a quarter by 77 and a half, and I laid a framework completely around the perimeter of that sheet, and then I also created a grid pattern down the middle. Now, remember, it's one inch deep or thick, if you will. Um, use a little bit of wood glue and some brad nails to secure it in place, and it was as solid as it gets. Once the MDF base was ready, I then brought over the maple plywood that I needed. First, I trimmed off two pieces that were two and a half inches wide. This would be basically the wraparound apron for the tabletop. Then I just cut it right in half just to make it easier to work with, and I brought her over to my table saw. Now at this point, this would be the herringbone or the shiplap pieces, if you want to call them that, and I ripped them on my table saw at six inches wide. Keep in mind, the 80 tooth blade that we talked about earlier, that's a perfect blade to use on these pieces to prevent or minimize the amount of chipping that happened. I then came back to my MDF base and I found the center line. Now this would be the center line where all the herringbone patterns would be pointing. And then from that point on, it's a whole lot of wood glue. I always use Tybon too, if you've seen any of my previous videos. And then I rolled it with this roll-on kind of wood glue dispenser and I secured it with the 18 gauge brat nails into place. Once I got about 95% of the way of the pattern on, I then took my track saw, or you can use a, a straight edge if you will, and I trimmed off all the pieces that were overlapping. I then took those pieces and I continued finishing off the pattern without having to go buy more plywood. Finally, once all the last pieces were on, I did my final trimming and I was ready to secure the perimeter. When it comes to securing the perimeter or wrapping the apron around, I had the two long pieces that we cut earlier of the maple ply, but I still needed the two shorter pieces. So I just ran off and I bought a four by two sheet of the maple ply at my local hardware store, and that was enough to get the job done. I brought it over to my table saw and I beveled my blade at 45 degrees. I use a little sled like this on my table saw just to make a better cut, but you can always use just a skill saw and that'll work just fine, just take your time. At that point on, I just used plenty of wood glue and again, brad nails and secured all the wraparound aprons into place and uh, wait for the glue to dry. The table legs or the base are made out of a 2x2095, which is 16 gauge steel tubing. I'm laying it down on my fab lock from Certified Weld Tables. I'll put a link down in the description for you guys to check it out. I'm ensuring that they're symmetrical and straight, I'm spraying a little bit of anti-splatter spray on it to keep my welds nice and clean. And then I'm dropping down a few welds that are gonna go at a nice slow pace. This is a pretty thin material and it's really easy to burn through. But if you wait here in a second, I'll show you a couple of tips and tricks to get yourself started welding in no time. All right guys, I know a lot of you have really showed a lot of interest in learning how to weld, but really feel intimidated by it. But I promise you it's not as intimidating or scary or even hard as it looks. I'll show you the setup that I have and I'll show you how easy it can be. A few things you need to consider when it comes to welding is getting yourself a welder that could potentially weld the material that you're going with. So the welder that I have is, this is a Hobart 140 and there's something special about it except the fact that it can weld up to a quarter inch thickness of steel, roughly. The 3D welder has two basic settings, the amplitude or the voltage and it has the wire speed controller on it. First thing you need to do before dialing your settings on your welder is figure out the material you're working with. In my situation, I'm working with the material that the wall thickness on it is 065, meaning it's 0.065 of an inch. 
uh, roughly 16th gauge, if you will. Then, based off of that, every welder, for the most part, everyday welder, has under the hood of it, the actual little cheat sheet that you can look at the settings that you need. So let me show you mine. So, right over here, it'll tell me the exact gases I'm working with, the material that I need to use, and the wire that I'm working with. And it'll tell me the exact setting. So in this situation, based off the material that I need and my setup on my welder, I need to put three on my amplitude or the voltage, and I need 35 on the wire speed. We come over here, we set three on our voltage, and we set 35 on the speed. We fire it up. Now the last thing that you know is there's basically two techniques when it comes to welding the pattern. There's an E technique, which is a cursive E, or there's a Z technique, where it's basically a Z. And that's all we're gonna do. So let me show you what this looks like. As you can see here, all I want is a nice cursive little E pattern and this is what it came out with. So, there you have it. Not difficult at all. Just get yourself the initial setup and then a little bit of practice and you'll be making your own furniture. So in the meantime, I'm gonna get back to finishing the rest of these legs. Let's go. When it comes to welding big projects like this, it's always important to keep things 90 degrees. So I'm really glad I have a, a jig like this from Certified Weld Tables that allows for me to clamp uh, other pieces to it and keep it at a 90 degree. When it comes to welding big projects like this, it's also a great idea to tack weld everything first. When you tack it on, it just holds it momentarily. It's nice and light. And then once it's connected and kind of stabilized, you then can finish off all your weld without having your material move too much when it heats up and cools off. When spray painting things in my garage, I use this paint shelter from HomeRide. It just assembles like a camping tent. Once it was up, I then used a little acetone to degrease the entire project of the steel. That stuff gets pretty nasty pretty quick. And I laid a few coats of uh, the painted primer in the flat black. It turned out really great. Once it was dry, I had the missus bring over the tabletop to the table base, and I was ready to start putting the veneer edge banding on top of the apron. If you've never used this kind of stuff before or edge bending before, basically just iron it on and then use a scrap piece of wood to start kind of leveling it out and pushing it deep down to make sure that it sticks to it pretty well. End pieces, give it a nice little quick miter to it just to give it that illusion of one solid piece. The nice thing about this technique is though it's a little bit of cheating, it's not real wood, uh, it's plywood, which is a lot stronger than MDF or particle board, so you'll at least have that feature and knowing the wood won't ever move. Then you just take a sharp razor blade, cut off the excess, and here's the key feature to make sure it's nice and smooth. Use a little scrap piece of wood with 150 grit sandpaper and start sanding it flush to make sure there's no harsh abruptions to give it that perfect one solid piece look when you're done. Once the veneer is done, I then patched up all the brad nail holes with a wood filler. This is a, a time color indicator that it goes on pink and then when it dries, it goes on more of this cream color. Uh, it's sustainable, so it kind of works really well. I then filled in all the holes, including all the cracks and crevices, just to give it a solid piece to prevent any kind of dust or debris going into it. And then I sanded everything smooth using 150 grit sandpaper. Be very careful, don't take too much of the veneer off. Use a little hand sanding when needed afterwards. And then when it comes to applying the stain, I'm using a color called Fruit Wood from Minwax. It's the first time using it, and I can't tell you how much the missus and I love it. It gives you this cool, warm feeling to it. It's a, a very light application, so there's no harsh blotchiness, and I think it applies very well. I did one coat, and then I dried everything off with a clean rag, and then I was getting it ready for the clear coat. For clear coats, I almost always exclusively use the same stuff. It's from Minwax, it's a polyacrylic, it's water-based, it's super easy to work with, it just pours into my HVLP sprayer. This one's from HomeRite as well, uh, it applies very well. And then it, just a couple of coats on it, really. I think overall on this project, I lay down about four to five coats. The nice thing about using this kind of sprayer that is that it dries fairly quickly. Once all the coats were on and the clear coats was nice and dry, I then flipped the tabletop over and then I installed these almost like a peg pieces if you will uh, lined up exactly as they would sit on the table base a little bit of wood glue some brad nails to hold them in place and then I drilled holes that were 1 8 inch thick into the table base where I could screw them in from the bottom I brought everything inside secured everything in place and voila everything looks fantastic I couldn't be happier with this project and the missus over the moon about it Hey, that is it for me this week. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you're bringing the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there. Tap that notification bell. That way you'll be alerted every single time the video comes out. If you want to follow me on social media, check out the tools that I use or check out the merch. I'll put a link down in the description below for you guys to check all that set out. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye.